Hi guys and welcome to the very first business tube that uh, you guys should be watching. Now these, these business tube sessions I will create one for each of the topic areas as we go through the course. Now for those of you that are watching this for the first time and are new to the course in year 10, the, uh, the course itself, the, the IGCSE is broken down into six sections. So we have section one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, section one is the first one that we're going to start looking at and each section basically will be covered in pretty much a, a term. So in year 10, you will do three sections, so term one will be section one and so on. Uh, this is the first one that we're going to start on. And what I'd like to do is whenever you watch one of these Business Tube podcasts, I'd like to make sure that you have a copy of the lesson slides to go with it. If you have a printer at home, that would be even better if you're able to, to, to print the slides out. I do put all of the slides on yellow, so my advice to you would be to print them in black and white, Otherwise, your parents are going to get very annoyed because you've used all of their yellow ink. If you're not able to print the slides first, just make sure you download a copy off of Frog so that you have a copy of the slides and you can follow them as we're going through the, uh, the podcast. Okay, so this is the first one that we're going to look at and this relates to the very first lesson that you will have either had or previously had at IGCSE. Pretty straightforward, guys, so I'm going to fly through this one. And the, the first thing that you need to know for, um, for, for IGCC is the difference between needs and wants. And I hope you've all got a good idea of the difference between needs and wants. Okay, so needs, as the name suggests, is something that you can't live without. If you don't have your needs met, if, if any of your needs are not present, then unfortunately you would die. So the things that are needs are things like food, water, shelter, clothing, warmth. Okay, these are needs. Now, when I say clothing, I don't mean having the latest designer fashion, the latest Gucci handbag, for example. That doesn't count as clothing. Just something that you can put around you, something to keep you warm, okay? So these are our, our needs. Um, our wants are things that we would like to have. We wouldn't die without them. We would like to have them. They make our life better. There are things that we desire, okay? Um, so just quickly to go through this list guys, so the, the, the food on there is obviously a need, the iMac computer is a want, the other needs here, I'm not talking about setting you on fire, this is on here as, uh, as warmth, because we would all die if we're not kept warm. Um, we have water, this is a need as well, but the, the wants, the things that we like, the things that we wouldn't die without, but life wouldn't be the same without them, so we have TV, cars, uh, the, the Xbox and a mobile phone, these are our wants. Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of at IGCC, the, re the reason why we look at needs and wants, is that you need to be aware of the economic problem. Now, the problem that we have is that we have billions and billions and billions of people on this planet, each with needs and each with wants, okay? Now, unfortunately, we're very lucky in this country and in countries like the West and America and uh, various parts of Asia. We're, we're, we're very, very lucky that if, if we need something or want something, we can usually be able to buy it, okay? We're not struggling for food. We have all our needs certainly taken care of. Yes, there's some things that we want um, and, and some things that we, we, we can't have, but most of the time we have all of our needs and wants taken care of. But unfortunately, that is not the case for everybody on this planet. In places such as Africa, people are unable to eat. They don't even have their needs taken care of, never mind their wants. They cannot even eat. Yeah, They're not thinking about Xbox and Playstations, there's not enough food for them. Now the reason why we cannot take care of everybody, everybody doesn't live like we do unfortunately, is because there are not enough resources to go around. There's not enough food, there's not enough water, there's not enough resources from the ground such as aluminium, metal, plastic, okay? All of these resources are scarce, there's not very many, or there's not enough of them. So unfortunately there are millions of, and actually billions of people on this planet that are really, really struggling to survive, okay? Um, okay, just quickly before we move on to, to the economic problem, and I'll, I'll come back to what I've just been talking to you about, you do need to know the four factors of production for business studies. We'll come across these four factors many, many times as we go through the course. Uh, you just have to learn them, you just have to remember them, I'm afraid, guys. So the four factors of production, like I have on here, are land, labor, entrepreneur, and capital. Now, land is just a location for the business. It's somewhere where you can get your raw materials from, your resources. It's a location for you to actually do your production, where you can start making 
the, the, the products. So we do need a location, we do need lands, okay? And we also, like I said, need the land for the resources. Labor, labor is, is what we call uh, the, the, the employees, the people, okay? So whenever you see that word labor throughout the business of this course, we are referring to people, workers, employees. Capital is, like the picture suggests there, capital is the business terminology that we use for money. So businesses need money in order to be able to start, in order to be able to produce, and uh, we need an entrepreneur. The entrepreneur, we will cover again, guys, in another lesson's time, but entrepreneur in more detail, but entrepreneur is the person, the person who is setting up the business, the person who's risking their money, taking risks, using their ideas in order to start the business, and they're gonna be running and managing that business, okay? Now, in order to start any business, we need all four factors of production. They all come together so that we can start and, and create a successful business. If, we, if we're lacking, if we don't have any one of these, then the business would fail. Okay, just, uh, I'll just quickly go over this, guys. This is just something that's in the textbook, and you do need to be aware of why do we need businesses? What is the benefit of businesses? How do businesses help society? Now, first of all, they produce goods and services. If there were no businesses, then we would have no shops to go to. We wouldn't be able to just go down to a supermarket and buy food because they wouldn't exist. So they provide goods and services for us as customers in order to buy them. They provide jobs as well. So I, I work for a business, the school's a business, your parents work for businesses, and you guys will work for businesses in the future. They provide jobs. Why do we need jobs? Well, jobs gives us money and we need money in order to buy our needs and wants in order to survive. Businesses also do other things, so they, they, they build and they improve infrastructure, so they build roads, they create roads, they create infrastructure for society, for us to be able to use in order to go about our lives. And lastly, businesses pay tax, okay? So they pay tax to the government, the government takes that tax from the businesses and they use that to build hospitals, roads, schools, police service, all of these things. So we do need businesses. Businesses are important for society. Now, just going back to what I was saying earlier about our needs and wants, about unfortunately, there are billions of people on this planet that are unable to eat or that are unable to, 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 to get their wants, okay? So not everybody is, unfortunately, not everybody is as lucky as we are. Now the problem that we have is that everybody has needs, everybody has wants. We're all wanting things, we're all needing things in order to use. But the issue that we have is that we only have one planet, and this planet has limited resources. So we have the combination of unlimited wants plus limited resources, and that creates scarcity or the economic problem. Now, the economic problem just means that there are not enough resources to satisfy all the people on this planet, all everybody's needs and wants. Okay? So the textbook definition here, guys, I'll just read it out to you. Uh, the economic problem results from there being unlimited wants, but limited resources to provide the goods and services to satisfy everybody's wants. And that creates scarcity. Scarcity is just meaning we don't have enough stuff. Okay? Opportunity cost. Now, opportunity cost is what we call the next best alternative that you had to forego, that you had to sacrifice in order to do something. Now, what I like to think about with opportunity cost, in life we all have to make choices. We cannot have absolutely everything. Why can we not have everything? Well, because of the economic problem. So we can't have everything. So in life we all have to make choices. Either we don't have enough resources to make everything that everybody wants, or we don't have enough money in order to buy all of the things we want. So we have to make choices. Businesses have to make choices too. And this is what we call opportunity cost. Now, the opportunity cost, if you take option A, Option B becomes your opportunity cost. It's the one you sacrifice, it's the one that you didn't take. Okay? So it's the opportunity that you missed, the one that you didn't take because you had to make choices. For example, if you decide to buy, you, you, could, you only have enough resources, only enough money to, to buy one of these things, you decide to buy the iPad, then the iPhone would be your opportunity cost. That's the one you sacrifice, that's the one that you didn't take. If you decided to take the BMW, so you bought the BMW, then your opportunity cost would be the Land Cruiser, because the Land Cruiser was the option that you sacrificed, it's the one you forgot, it's the one that you didn't take, okay, and that is your opportunity cost, that's the one that you missed, okay. You took this one, so you sacrificed this one, so the Land Cruiser is your opportunity cost. 
If you buy the Kit Kat, then the Mars becomes your opportunity cost. Um, hopefully that's not because we don't have enough money, uh, it's because we shouldn't be eating two chocolate bars at the same time. And lastly, if you want to go on holiday and you decide that you want to go onto this nice tropical island, let's say it's the Maldives, you decide to go to the Maldives, the opportunity cost would be going to Italy, to Pisa. Okay? So, in life we all have to make choices. One of the things you need to know is about businesses as well. We as consumers and customers have to make choices. We cannot buy everything. Businesses are the same as well. Now, the school, for example, decided, and this is the case in my classroom, that they decided to buy PC computers, Windows PC computers. Now, they may have had two choices, Windows PC computers or Apple Mac computers. They couldn't afford both. So they took the Windows PCs, their opportunity cost, the one that they didn't take, the one that they sacrificed was the Apple Mac, that is their opportunity cost, that is what they're missing out on. So we've taken the PCs but we're missing out on the Apple Mac computers. Governments have to, to make choices too, maybe it's to build a hospital or maybe it's to build a police station. They decide to build a hospital because they, don't have, they have enough money for the hospital but they had to sacrifice the police station, that was their opportunity cost, that was the one that they didn't take, that they had to forego in order to take the, the hospital. So remember the opportunity cost is the one you had to, to, to forego, it's the one that you had to sacrifice in order to take the one that you took. Okay, um, so that's just going over what we've looked at already. Just to give you uh, other examples as well, maybe, maybe for a company like Apple or, or for a manufacturer, maybe um, an opportunity cost that they may have, maybe they're going to buy some new machines to build even better iPhones. Or the other option is to ex expand the business into to expand into more countries, but they don't have enough money to do both. So which one do you take? Do you expand? Do you use your money to expand? Or do you buy new machines to build even better iPhones? So if they decide to buy better, bigger machines to build the iPhones, their opportunity cost is expansion. They weren't able to do that because they don't have enough money. So we have to make choices all of the time. The next thing that you need to know about is division of labour. Now, division of labour is just basically when you have a production line, and let's say you have all of the workers working in a line, and the example that I use in class is, is making the box, so just think back to when you made the box. And on our production line, we had somebody cutting, somebody sticking, somebody folding, and somebody assembling. Now, division of labour is when you specialise and one person does the same job every single day. So if you're a cutter, every day you cut. If you're a sticker, every day you stick. If you're a folder, every day you fold. But like if you're making a car, if your job is to put the wheels on, every day you put the wheels on. So division of labor is when the production of a product is broken down into small tasks, and each worker is assigned, is given a task, and every single day they do the same task, day in, day out. And we call this specialization. You must use that word, guys, when you're talking about division of labour. So we specialise, we specialise in doing one job. Okay, I have this picture on here. Uh, so this is a bit like a production line. Uh, these people are specialising. I don't know what it is that they're making there. Maybe, make, maybe making salads or something. But each person on the production line is doing a different thing. So maybe one person is chopping carrots, and they, they chop carrots every day. Maybe the other person is cutting the chicken. Okay, point to make, getting the chicken together, ready to go in uh, to, to this particular product. Or they, they could be making computer components, okay? But every person is given a individual job, a single job, and that's the job they do every single day. Now, the advantages and disadvantages of division of labor and specialization. Now, imagine you're doing the same job every single day. Every day you do the same thing. If that's cutting, every day you cut. Well, because you do it every day, I like to use the same practice makes perfect. The more you do something, the faster you are going to get. So we have higher productivity. We get much, much faster because we're doing the same thing every day. We have lower costs, okay? Because workers are doing an individual task, you don't have workers all doing the same thing. So one worker's doing one job, the next worker's doing the same, a, a different job. So you don't have workers doing the same thing. Everybody is uh, focused on their job, so that reduces the, 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 the cost. It's easier to train as well, because if I'm only doing one job, what do I need to be trained at? Well, it's just that one job. 
I don't need to worry about what everybody else is doing. I don't need to be trained at what everybody else is doing further down the production line. I just focus on what I'm doing. So it's much, much easier and it's much, much cheaper to train somebody with division of labor. The problem is, is that if you're a cutter and every single day you're cutting and you don't do anything else, you're going to get very, very bored. And this is a really, really big drawback to specialization of and division of labor. Yes, it's fast, but workers will get bored. And if workers get bored and if workers get demotivated, what, what's going to happen? Well, the quality of the product is probably going to go down. Maybe they'll get bored and leave their job. Okay? Um, but they'll probably start making mistakes because they're so bored. So it's fast, but maybe we start to lose quality. Also, if the workers don't have responsibility. You're doing the same job every day. You lack responsibility. You're not trusted. You're just, you're just given this one task that you do over and over and over again that you specialize in. So we have no responsibility. And again, we're going to get bored. And that is uh, going to be a problem for the business. Maybe, again, the quality will go down. Okay guys, so I'm going to leave this one there and I hope you enjoyed the, the, the first podcast that, um, for the course. Please make sure that you watch every single podcast as we go through the course and I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Thank you.